As I mentioned earlier, for the last two weeks, we've been looking at Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. And today we continue as we look there at chapter 5, verses 1 to 10, which we read for our second lesson today. Where we ended last week in Paul's second letter, chapter 4, verse 18, Paul was talking about making the difference or understanding the difference between what is unseen and what is seen. And how our faith needs to focus on all those things that are unseen and not what is seen. See, Paul was making it clear that having faith in the seen things will only last a little while. For putting faith in seen things, those things decay. Those things are temporal. They do not last. But Paul helps us see that the unseen things do not decay. They last forever. They are eternal. They're not temporal. And so now Paul continues that discussion here in chapter 5 as he goes on to expound on that distinction between what is seen and what is unseen. He does so because there are so many critics, especially in his day, that there were so many critics against Paul saying that he was not a true minister. And so he expounded on this and he wanted them to see that he really truly was a minister, but really that he truly was a believer, a believer in Jesus, the unseen God, the triune God. So Paul here in chapter five is addressing those critics saying that he's truly not a believer, that he's truly not a minister. And so he's expounding in depth on the differences between the seen things and the unseen things. See, many of the believers back then were putting their faith in the seen things, what they do, what they receive. And Paul makes, the, makes it very clear that that's a faith that's empty. It's vain. It's void. And here, in the unseen things, is what they need to put their faith in. Life is not about this life. Profound statement, isn't it? Life, living, is not about this life. Rather, living, our life, is all about eternal life. That's our purpose. You know, there's this chart that I have in the Christian Foundations class that I take everybody through if they want to become a member. It's a membership course. And in the second lesson, there's this chart that contrasts between creation and evolution. And it covers five different things. The first thing it covers is the time span. Well, in creation, it took six days. According to evolution, the world came to be in millions and billions of years, and it's still evolving today. That's the first thing. Then it covers the method. Well, how did it come to be? Well, creation was at the voice of God. He spoke, and it came to be. Evolution... Theories of science focus on the Big Bang Theory. How it kind of just all exploded and came to be. That's the theory that's being taught now. Then it goes on to the third thing. What about human life? Where, does, where, where do the humans come from? Well, according to creation, dust of the earth. And God breathed life into the man. So the breath of God and dust of the earth. According to evolution, well, it came from lower forms all the way leading up to apes and then to mankind as we know it today. Then it gets into the most important two distinctions, the last two. And these are very important for us to focus on. It covers who are humans now responsible to. Well, according to creation, mankind is responsible to God. According to evolution or science, mankind is responsible to themselves. And then it gets to the final, the final distinction. And this one's really key. It asks, what's the purpose for life? According to creation, to serve God. According to science and evolution, survival. That's the purpose, to survive. So you look at that list and you catch the importance in all that and how when you look at the evolution steps, 
When you go from the lower forms and where, how they came to be, and then all of a sudden, what's the purpose in life? It's really an empty meaning of life based just on science. Science is good to a point, but when you base everything just on science and that's all you rely on for your faith, what happens is you're serving yourself and it's all about survival. Treading water in this life. That's all there is. That's because we live not for this life, but for eternal life. Paul explains. Let's look at the second letter again. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. Because when we are clothed, we will not be found naked. For while we are in this tent, we groan and are burdened. Because we do not wish to be unclothed, but to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling, so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. Now the one who has fashioned us for this very purpose is God, who has given us the spirit as a deposit, guaranteeing what is to come. Therefore, we are always confident and know that as long as we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we live by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and would prefer to be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So we make it our goal to please him, whether we are at home in the body or away from it. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. Paul quickly summarizes chapter 4 in the first two verses that I just read. Let's look at those real quick. For we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, an eternal house in heaven, not built by human hands. Meanwhile, we groan, longing to be clothed instead with our heavenly dwelling. So if you remember the last two weeks, two weeks ago, we were talking about how God has made us clay jars. The fragile clay jars that we are don't know how to survive on our own. Rather, we'd fall apart if we were all on our own. But the broken clay jars that we are, he uses and molds. And fragile as we are, he uses us to display his life through us. That was two weeks ago. Last week, it was all about the seen and unseen things, putting faith in the unseen things. So you put those things together and you look here. God has molded us. He's crafted us, delicate as we are for a purpose to shine his light. He is our creator. He is our purpose. And last week with those unseen things, what did he focus on? We like to focus on the seen things. And what do you say? Though outwardly we are wasting away. Paul covers that with what? The groaning. The groaning. Wasting away the pain, the suffering, the groaning. The groaning here in our earthly tents, our earthly dwellings. That's chapter 4 in a nutshell right there in those two verses. So now Paul expands on those thoughts here in chapter 5. What do we do with the clay jars that we are, as delicate as we are, suffering, broken, and groaning? What are we to be doing in these earthly vessels of which we live? First, we need to understand what Paul's talking about here. What Paul is meaning here by the earthly tents and the heavenly dwellings. Obviously, there's a difference there. And here, he's not specifically talking about your body. Rather, he's talking in bigger terms, more than just your body. Sure, your body's included in that, but it's not just your body. So think bigger than that. Everything earthly. Your body's a part of it. But everything that's encased on the temporal side of things is what he's talking about. Your earthly tent. Everything that's temporal. Everything that's here on this earth. Everything that is seen. Our bodies are temporal. We know them to be temporary. Our suffering, our pain, our groaning, our clay jars as we are, and the lives as we know it, all temporary. On the other side, heaven is eternal. 
Everything that is eternal is in the heavenly dwelling. So what includes in the heavenly dwelling is the presence of God, eternal life, God's glory, righteousness, your soul, the triune God. All of that makes up the, the heavenly dwelling that Paul is talking about there. The building from God. This distinction puts it all into perspective on what Paul wants us to think about here. The distinction is the colorful thoughts of earthly versus heavenly. On one side with the earthly, we see destruction. On the other side, we see the heavenly eternal construction. On one side, we hear and feel groaning, while on the other side, a clothing of righteousness. On one side, we feel the burden of pain and mortality, while on the other, patience awaiting immortality. On one side, we see the long life in the body away from the Lord. And on the other side, a life lived by faith that is unseen. On one side, we're living to please ourselves and to be judged accordingly. On the other side, we're living to please God by faith and to be judged accordingly. The back and forth that Paul uses here to describe these two in these 10 verses is incredible. The earthly dwelling and the heavenly dwelling. If you weren't convinced before on what purpose you have in life, after these 10 verses, Paul isn't leaving much room open. Either you live for this life or you live for eternal life. There's no other choice. Today is Father's Day. The statistics show that many of us are here today because of some influence of our fathers. Dads have a significant influence on their children for many things. But one of the most, if not the most, significant influences that we have on our children is the spiritual influence. Ultimately, it comes down to one father who has brought us here today where we are in our spiritual lives. Our Heavenly Father. Your Heavenly Father has created you and has molded you to long to be with him forever. To be in this heaven so that all this time on this earth, you're groaning of this temporal life so that you know that that groaning will end and you'll be at peace with him. So the question for us today is then how do we serve God our Father in this life as we await our heavenly life? How do we do that? That's a big question. How about you tell me the answer? Nobody wants to? <laughs> it's easy, actually. It's right there before us. It's right here in Paul's words here in the scriptures. We live not for this life, but for eternal life. So what does that look like? Maybe the better question to ask is, what doesn't that look like? Well, it doesn't look like always planning your schedule around not going to church so that you have that weekend to be able to get the other things done that you want to get done. It doesn't look like feeding your children with all the filth that's in the world, letting them watch whatever they want on TV, playing all the video games that they want, and allowing them to choose any friends that they choose to have, and then letting them make the decision if they want to go to church or not. It's not that. It doesn't look like having all the greatest intentions in the world by eating the right things, working out, taking care of your body, staying in the best shape, and not carving out any personal devotion time with God. It doesn't look like that. It doesn't look like constantly worrying about each day, every single hiccup in life, every single mistake that you make. It doesn't look like that. It does look like this. Struggling to get through each day. Tears. Pain. 
suffering, sadness. It looks like Jesus carrying the cross on the way to Golgotha and stumbling and falling and not able to carry it anymore. It sounds excruciating and painful. Why? Because the life that we live here in this earthly tent is unnatural. God did not create us to be like we are today. But this is the reality of the earthly tent in which we dwell today. But what changes our motivation each day is that we have something to look forward to. This life, this earthly tent is not the end. No, this earthly tent is just a tiny little footstep on our way to our permanent and eternal dwelling in heaven. And so we groan, and oh, we groan. This life is painful. It's so hard to be patient and wait for what is to come. We are like little children asking every minute, are we there yet? And what does our father answer? Soon, but not yet. We're ready. We want to be there now. So motives in our lives change since God's not taking us there yet. We strive to please our Lord by living our lives in everything that we do for the eternal life that he will soon bring us to. We live by faith, not by sight or feeling or urge or pain. We live by faith. So everything, even down to the littlest thing, we do out of faith. We care for our bodies because they are the temple of the Holy Spirit. That means staying in shape, eating the right kinds of foods, putting on sunscreen, and even brushing our teeth. Why? Because the body that we live in is not our own. It's the Lord's. That means we don't see a devotion and prayer time with the Lord as asking to take away time from our schedule, but rather we see our schedule taking time away from our Lord. That means we don't see church or Bible study as a waste of time because maybe I'm going to learn nothing new anyways. Or I'm just going to feel guilty or there's no way God wants me to be there because I'm not worthy enough to be in his presence. Rather, it means by faith wanting to grow more and more, never, never feeling sufficient enough, but wanting to always be able to wade through the wearies of this life with other Christians and their encouragement and their support, but most importantly, being strengthened by God's word and his body and blood. That is what brings us through this earthly tent to focus on our eternal home. Brothers and sisters, life is hard. It is really hard. It's painful and burdensome. Life as we know it is really not going to change, but it's probably going to get worse. And so we groan and groan some more. But that's why we don't live for this life. If we live for this life, it'll only drag us deeper into the dark. Rather, we live by faith and keep our eyes on heaven. The eternity that is in store for us, that Jesus Christ has won for us, that is what we suffer for each day. No longer does this earthly life drag us down, but rather it makes us stronger and it builds us up so that we know that each day is one day closer to being by his side in heaven. 
And this, dear friends, is made possible by our loving Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who's already clothed you with himself and his righteousness and has created faith in you through the Holy Spirit. Live, dear friends. Live not for this life, but for eternal life. Amen. Please stand. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. The Lord be with you. Amen.